this time I'm, I'm really trying to be determined to set up something that will last long term and that I can stop the yo-yo because if you yes. if you think back on my 20 years as an adult um the yo-yo has just been up and down you know about a 50 pound yo-yo up and down up and down up and down and I want that to stop chicken truck and big wheels there humming high rate of fuel consumption missing mama needing love and rolling with a way of sound running like a southern shaker I don't need no Welcome back to Trucking Fitness Radio, the number one driver's health and fitness podcast in the world. My name is Mark Manera. I'm the founder and CEO of the Trucking Fitness Company, and I'm pumped to have you listening to this episode. As you're aware, we are on a mission to make the trucking industry a healthier place. And this podcast is just one of the ways that we're doing that. So if you enjoy the show or you get some value or motivation out of it, share it with a friend. If they're a driver, awesome. If they're in the trucking industry, sweet. If they're not in the industry and you just think they can get some value out of it, uh, I love it. And that's how we grow this show. So I'd love your support and uh, help us grow. And, you know, if we're going to do this movement together, uh, we need to work together, spread the message. So thank you for listening and uh, share it with someone. Today, we are talking to my friend, Jamie Irvine. Uh, But before we get into that, Did you know you can be a guest on this podcast? We are having drivers come on the show and giving you or another driver you know the opportunity to get one-on-one help from me. We'll talk about your situation. You know, we'll talk about the ups and downs and the hardest part of sticking to your workout and nutrition plan on the road and give you the opportunity to ask any specific questions you have to me. The whole conversation will be focused on helping you get on the right path to losing weight on the road. It's 100% free. And you'll help inspire a ton of drivers in the process too. So we want to help you. We want to hear from you. And we also want to hear from drivers who have made a big transformation on their own. I I can't tell you how many drivers comment on our videos. I post a TikTok or uh, on Facebook or Instagram and they say, I'm, I'm down 50 pounds. I'm, I've lost a hundred pounds in the last three years. And, you know, first off, congratulations. That's amazing. I'm pumped to hear that, but if you've been through that and lost a ton of weight or just found a way to stay healthy on the road on your own, you can help inspire thousands of other drivers by just telling your story. And we want to give you a platform to do that. So if you fall into either of those categories, you want some help on your personal journey, or you want to just help inspire and tell your story of how you lived a healthy life, uh, go to the link in our show notes or jump over to truckandfit.com slash radio. So T-R-U-C-K-I-N-F-I-T dot com slash radio and fill out our show application. Literally takes three minutes, people. We go do that. We want to hear from you. And we're still early on in this podcast. So as we grow, it's going to be harder for you to get on the show. So thank you for being early and to reward you, come on the show and be a guest. Today, we are talking to Jamie Irvine, uh, he's the host of the Heavy Duty Parts Report and has been in the trucking and transportation industry for years. Uh, To be 100% transparent, Jamie has not driven a truck for a living, uh, but he's worked in the industry for years, been around drivers and, you know, has opened up personally to me a lot about, you know, some of the struggles he's had in the past with his health and some of, um, you know, the solutions he's found and the, the lifestyle changes he's made to fit it into his routine. And I think that I'm excited to hear more about his story. And I think you're going to get a ton of value from his perspectives and just hearing how he has, uh, worked through his journey of becoming a healthier person. So Jamie, welcome to the trucking fitness radio. So glad to be here. Thanks for having me on the show. And my father's a truck driver, so he uh, has been driving for almost 40 years. And uh, I, it's, it's kind of ironic that uh, I ended up in the trucking industry because I never met my father. And I only found out he was a truck driver uh, when I found my biological family when I was 40 years old. And my aunt says to me, you're in the trucking industry? No way. So is your father. Wow. <laughs> so I guess, it's, I guess it's in the genes. Yeah, that's amazing. I didn't know that. Okay, that's really cool. That's really cool. So I guess before we dive too deep into this, give everyone a little background on yourself, how, you know, your story of getting into the industry. 
Sure. Well, I grew up in the East Coast. I'm Canadian and uh, I was just uh, north of the main border. So I had friends on the U.S. side. We'd cross the border all the time. And um, like I said, I never knew my biological father and he was from out West. So when I got out of school, I, I met a girl who lived in Vancouver and I chased after her and moved all the way across the country to my mother's chagrin at 17 years old and uh, found myself in Vancouver, British Columbia, just north of Seattle. And um, it was like, okay, I'm 17 going on 18 and I just graduated high school and I need to find a, a job. So I took a summer job working in a remanufacturing facility. And uh, well, actually I, I, had a couple odd jobs leading up to that. And then I was like, I need to get something a little, a little more than that. So then uh, I ended up working at that remanufacturing facility and uh, got into, you know, got introduced to the trucking industry because we were remanufacturing valves and, and, and pneumatic controls for logging trucks and for mining equipment. And so that was my introduction. And what started off as just maybe a job that uh, would give me a little more stability than a summer job turned into the first 10 years of my career. I've basically been in trucking since 1998, with the exception of a, of a period of time when I left the industry to start my own business. And when I sold that business, I got back into trucking. So for many, many years, I've been uh, in the industry on the parts side, and now I'm the host of the heavy duty parts report. That's awesome. And so I guess from, well, t tell me a little bit about going from working kind of in the shop, in the factory to on the media side of trucking. And where was that? And how'd that how did you get sparked with the interest of, you know, creating content for the transportation industry, which me being newer in the industry is a huge need and there's a lack of content uh, and there's a, yeah, especially on the health and wellness side of things, but in general, there's a lack of content. So tell me about that. Well, like I said, I, the first 10 years of my career, I was working remanufacturing. I, I started off on the shop floor, became a shop foreman. Then I became an operations manager and then the national sales account manager for that company. So I was uh, managing all of their sales across uh, all of Canada. And so then um, I went to work for Traction Heavy Duty, which is Napa Automotive's heavy duty division. They've got some US branches, but they're very strong here in Canada as an aftermarket distributor of heavy duty parts. I worked for them for a couple of years and, and did really well with them. And then it was 2009 and um, I decided to start my own business. So I, I left and uh, that, that was disastrous. I had a partner and within four months he said, I don't want to do this and pulled out. And my wife and I just didn't have the resources to, to carry on with that business. So, so that ended very quickly. Uh, it's 2009. There wasn't a lot of people hiring. You know, we were in tough times economically. And so I kind of had a choice as like, what do I do next? Uh, so I started a contracting business in 2009. And then we, that was very successful. We built that. We started with our last $700. We built it up, sold it in 2016. And I was too young to retire. I uh, still needed to work to provide for my family. You know, we took the money from the sale of the company and we put it into real estate. So um, I needed to get back into something. And one of my old bosses uh, called me up and said, Hey, I hear you're, you're thinking about making a change. We've uh, changed companies. We don't work for traction anymore. Now we work for truck pro out of uh, Memphis, Tennessee. And then um, we've got a Canadian division. Would you, would you be willing to come sell parts with us again? And I said, I would love to get back into, into the trucking industry. So I did. And uh, I went from, you know, working physically every day, running my contracting business, being really physical and active. And then all of a sudden now I'm riding around in a truck and delivering donuts and doing the sales account manager thing. And then, um, you know, all of a sudden the weight started coming back on and, and uh, that, that was disappointing. But uh, I was very happy to be back in the trucking industry. And somewhere around the second year of selling parts, I realized uh, that there was an opportunity to create the heavy duty parts report. But that wasn't before I spent two years podcasting on a different podcast. And uh, it was very broad and it, it wasn't really specific. It was just called build a better business. And it never really went anywhere. And I remember that day where and I, I looked in my, my podcast app and I typed in heavy duty parts. And you know there was some trucking uh, podcasts that, that were specific for drivers and for logistics and, and that kind of thing. But there was nothing for just heavy duty parts. And that was just that, uh, you know, palm to forehead moment like oh 
I, I could have been doing this for the last two years. So I pivoted in June of 2019. I launched the heavy duty parts report. I shut down the other show after 150 episodes. Within episode 13, I met my first client client. They asked me if I'd like to be a consultant and work with them on parts and sales and marketing. And I said, that would be great. So then I quit my sales job uh, at the end of 2019 and started my consulting business January 1st, 2020. And I've been podcasting and consulting ever since. And I've never been so happy to be involved in the trucking industry as I am right now. That's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, and thank you for sharing your story. And I guess you kind of mentioned it there of you know, when you uh, sold your business to getting back into sales and kind of where the weight started. So walk me through kind of your journey from a health and wellness standpoint. And, you know, I think there's a lot of drivers out there who can relate with the lack of physical activity and weight adding on because donuts, because truck stop food, because McDonald's are just all of those things combined. And so walk me through kind of your history of uh, your, your struggles with your weight and, and the health. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you kind of the whole, the whole story as quickly as I can. When I was a, a kid, let's say in um, going from elementary school into like middle school or junior high, uh, my nickname was tiny and it wasn't ironic. Uh, I was very skinny, very small for my age, and people were were teasing me about that. And then um, somewhere around, I think, grade seven, grade eight, all of a sudden, you know, puberty kicks in and mm -hmm. I gained like eight inches and packed on a bunch of, you know, my, my shoulders got bigger, my frame got bigger, and they stopped calling me tiny. And um, when I was 17, I, I was six feet tall and 220 pounds with not an ounce of fat on me. I've got a great picture of me and my buddy and he's a little shorter and he's, he's, he looked like Bruce Lee. He was just ripped. And, Man. and, but that small frame and I had this big frame. I was active. I played basketball every day. I was, you know, just a super active teenager. And so, but I was heavy for, for my age, most guys at six feet, you know, at 220 would be overweight. But for me, that, that was like my ideal weight. I graduated high school, moved to Vancouver, started working at that remanufacturing facility. And by the time I was 19, I weighed 280 pounds. And to look at me, you never would have guessed I weighed that much. But um, I didn't, I didn't look fit anymore. I had a belly, yeah. I, I had, uh, you know, around my the love handles, uh, the chest, it just wasn't, it wasn't uh, what I wanted it to be. So um, I, I had a motorcycle accident when I was 21, I got T-boned by a tow truck. And the shock of that accident and being in the hospital and, and just, I, I don't know how or why, but I lost 50 pounds. Wow. And it wasn't because I got fit. It was just um, my body. Yeah. I guess I wasn't eating as much um, in recovery uh -huh. and I was young, right? I was 21. So my yeah. metabolism was revved up. So I lost 50 pounds. And now I'm sitting at like 230. And as an adult now, uh, that was an ideal weight for me. I, 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 I felt great, looked great, um, and it was good. And I maintained that weight for quite a quite a while. But then slowly, as as I got towards thirty, I, I packed on the weight again, got back up to two eighty, and I really wasn't happy. Um, and uh, and and to be one hundred percent transparent, when I was very young, in my late teens and early twenties, I partied a lot and um, yeah. lived unhealthy. And I think when I when I got to that like mid mid twenties, 25, 26, I got a young daughter and I needed to stop. I needed to get serious about being an adult. And, and, and so I cut out the partying and I cut out all of everything associated with that. But then I think that's when the weight came on because all of a sudden now I'm married I'm I'm, you know, eating a lot more, not doing as much exercise, wasn't as active the social life. And, you know, it just, it just, the weight came back on. So I found myself closing in on 30 and I was back up to 280. I was very unhappy with how I looked in my body. And so in 2012, I made, I just remember it was like December, 2011 going into 2012 like around new year's and it wasn't like a new year's resolution and one day i just stopped having a late night snack and okay. i just stopped and all of a sudden i lost like 15 pounds 
And then I decided that um, I wanted to be more careful of what I ate around mealtime. So a lot, my, my problem has never been breakfast and lunch. It's always supper. I overeat, I eat two full plates at supper. And so then I just stopped eating two full plates at supper. And then I lost a little bit more weight. And then I found out that I have an uncle who's like 77 and still playing hockey. And I thought, what am I doing? Like, I love sports as a teenager. I haven't been, been you know, playing sports. Um, maybe I should get active again. And so I got really back into sports, hockey, mountain biking, cycling, running. And yeah, I got right down to like 230, which is like, again, for me, an adult, as a, as a full grown adult, yeah. that was like a, I almost an ideal weight. I probably could have lost another five to 10 pounds at, to, to be perfect, but I was as close to perfect as I was going to be as an adult. I felt great, looked great. Everything was awesome. I had a workplace accident. I broke my pelvis that did set me back. And um, I had to go through six months of rehab and things like that. And so then over between 30 and 40, um, after I sold my contracting business, I got back into sales. I, I was still active. I was, I was still cycling. I was still playing uh, hockey, but I couldn't run. I couldn't do the, the, that kind of physical stuff because of the impact to my, my pelvis. And that's a, your foundation. Yeah. Um, but, but honestly, it wasn't that it was just, I, I was overeating and I wasn't paying attention and I wasn't being as focused on health as I should be and the weight yo-yoed all the way back up uh -huh. to, to 280 so so that kind of brings us to when you and i first met as i uh, saw one of your posts on linkedin it was in late 2021 and i was pretty unhappy i started to get the man boobs and the stomach is there and i you know i just I was playing hockey. I was still active, but I, the weight was there. And so I had hired a personal trainer in September when I saw a couple of your posts. And I think I remember sharing that yeah. with you. And, yeah. and I started that. So I'm, I'm now right now I'm 42 and I'm, I've uh, been working out with a trainer for four months. I've put on some muscle. I haven't lost a lot of weight, but um, I'm getting really focused on health again. And this time I'm, I'm really trying to be determined to set up something that will last long term and that I can stop the yo yo. Because if you, yes. if you think back on my 20 years as an adult, um, the yo yo has just been up and down, you know, about a 50 pound yo yo up and down, up uh -huh. and down, up and down. And I want that to stop. Well, yeah. And, you know, I think to kind of break that story down, because I think you, you, you had some pretty good gems in there. And I think the first one that I, I picked up right away was, you know, you were talking about late December when you kind of had that you know, a spark of um, inspiration, you know, it wasn't a new year's resolution, but you started with one change and it was just a, Hey, I'm going to focus on nailing and stop snacking in the evening. And so it's something I, we have in our program. I talk about is, you know, one of the first things I, I have drivers do is stop. I call it stop grazing, right? I'm mm -hmm. cool with snacking, but grazing is a difference. And the difference is it's a planned snack of you're going to eat healthy. It's just something grazing is I'm bored. So I need to eat. And that's where for a lot of people, including myself last night, I grazed and ate a bowl of cereal last night. <laughs> I didn't need that bowl of cereal, but uh, you know, I think that is uh, one of those places where a lot of people add 100 to, 100 to 500 calories here, 100 to 500 calories there. And it's just like, well, I, I try to eat healthy, but um, the snacks add up and, and the grazing. And it's crazy how one little change like that can really make a huge impact. But, um, you know, the other thing that, you know, I think the big concept that you talked about was the yo-yoing. And, you know, I think for a lot of people. And I think it's part of our culture. I think it's part of social media where it's kind of like, well, we need to go hit the ground running. You need to change everything at once. And it needs to be this huge weight loss journey. And, you know, I think you're a prime example of you need to set it up because this, this is a marathon, not some sprint. Yeah. And, you know, yes, losing 10 pounds in the first month is super motivating. It's awesome. You see your pay, you see it pay off. But if you add and put that 10 pounds, maybe 20 pounds back on six months from now, it doesn't really matter. And so, you know, I think the biggest thing for a lot of drivers is how do you set it up in a way that's sustainable and consistent and for the long run? And so, you know, I think, um, you know, I'd love to kind of hear what your strategies have been. And I know for you, it seems like the exercise piece has been a really big um, I call it, uh, it's called a linchpin habit where it's like the big 
thing that you check off the list and then other aspects of your health become healthier automatically from just executing that one action. But so what, what are some of those other things that you've done from a habit base? Well, I, I agree with what you're saying about um, the, the net, the necessity to set something up that is long-term. Because I think when I look back at the times, like when I had that accident in 21 and like that was forced upon me and it wasn't a sustainable uh, change. So then as, as a few years went on, I, you know, as soon as my lifestyle uh, adjusted back to normal, the weight came right back on again. And then I think about all the progress I made back in 2012 and I lost all the weight and then just slowly over a 10 year period, it, it's not like it all came on fast. It was just very slowly, a few pounds at a time, uh, year after year after year. And I'm back up to, you know, the heaviest I, I've been in my adult life. So when I decided in September to, to attack this problem again, um, I decided that I wanted to set something up that I could do indefinitely, meaning I want to set a routine that when I'm 40 or 80, mm -hmm. I can do it. Now, at 40, I might be able to lift a lot more weight yeah. uh, or exercise more easily. Uh, but if the idea is this routine is going to is going to be sustainable and is going to be something that I can do indefinitely. And then I also didn't tackle all of the issues all at once. So for me, there is definitely the need to be more physically active because of my job, right? I spend a lot of time in my studio recording content for my podcast. I'm a consultant. So I'm spending a lot of time working with clients in my office. Um, I need to, to, exercise more. So I tackled that first, but I know that there is, um, you know, if, if, if fitness is hundred percent, so is nutrition, right? It's not, you know, it has to be both, but there's a third component, which is mental health. And um, I understand that these things are all connected. And so what I decided back in September was I was going to start with, with creating a, a uh, weekly schedule that I could maintain indefinitely, no matter what happens in my life, uh, for fitness. And then in, you know, now that I've established that over four months, my, my next plan is to work on, on the fit, on the, uh, the nutrition side. And I have been working on the mental health, uh, for the last couple of years, but I'm going to redouble down on that as I move forward, because I think if that mental health piece isn't maintained as well, um, the, the rest of it will be hard to maintain over a really long period of time. I mean, especially with the mental health versus physical health, it's like, it's like the chicken and the egg, you know, which came first, because if one goes downhill, the, the other one is, is really close behind. And, yeah. you know, I think that's a really important aspect and it's a really important thing for a lot of drivers because of the isolated nature that trucking is. And I think it's really important to, um, you know, you mentioned to us before the show talking about just the social aspect and being an extrovert and liking that community aspect. And I think for drivers, extrovert or introvert, it doesn't matter having that community if that's a coach, if that's a Facebook group, that's positive because that's tough to come by sometimes too. <laughs> um, but having that group of people who understand what you're going through and can help you through the highs and lows, right? And um, I think that's really important. And then, you know, I think the other thing that you mentioned that is just gold is you got to start somewhere. And if you start, you know, like you said, on all, there's all three categories, right? If you try to do all three at once, you're going to fumble and you're going to go back downhill. And so I think it's really important to, you know, look at yourself and yeah, Jamie, you might've, you know, the physical aspect and starting exercise might have been your golden start point. Maybe for someone else, it's not that right. Maybe it is, you know, working on snacks or working on making breakfast healthy or a nutrition thing. But I think the important aspect is you need to find your starting place and something that you're motivated about, you're excited to, and in your day-to-day -day routine, it doesn't change everything up because if you change everything up, especially when you're on the road, it's really easy to fall back and it's, it's not going to be consistent. So um, I, I love that. And, you know, I think just kind of digging more into the mental aspect of that, can you talk on, you know, especially through the starting point and kind of the realization of, man, I need to do something about this kind of where your mental health was at and how that's been since, um, you know, in the last six months? 
Yeah. So, so I, I mentioned at the outset that I never met my father and um, growing up, I did have a stepfather that came in at five, but he's a great guy, but it's just not the same as your dad. Right. So when I was young, like I mentioned, I partied hard and suffered in teenage and 20 years, but I, I mean, I took that to like next level and I didn't. And unfortunately at that time I did develop some, some addiction and some bad habits that I had to overcome. Um, I didn't understand that there was some mental health issues there with, with um, abandonment issues, with um, depression, things like that. That was, that was underlying driving forces. So I just was like social and active and partied and had was you know, young man full of energy. And I didn't realize that I was running and I was just trying to keep myself busy so that I didn't have to face some of these demons. Right. And, um, as I, as I gained in maturity and I, and I got clean and sober and I, and I got my life rebuilt and I got married and I've got a child and I'm, you know, I'm a family man and I'm, I'm doing really well professionally. I'm doing really well personally, but the mental health challenges were persistent. And I got to a point a couple of years ago where I decided that it was time to to really lean into that. So I went into a therapy program and got a bunch of tools. I, I learned a bunch of tools through, through cognitive uh, behavior therapy that um, would enable me to, to finally address some of this. And then I went on quite a journey. I, I found my biological family and, and, you know, I, I still haven't met my father. He still doesn't want anything to do with me, but that's his problem. Not, not mine. I I've got an aunt and an uncle and cousins and a grandmother. I mean, my grandmother, my grandmother, on my maternal side died in 1987. Suddenly in 2020, I get a grandmother again, That's crazy. <laughs> you know? That's crazy. Yeah. So, yeah. so um, that was quite the journey. And, and, in, in many ways, I was able to um, kind of like fix a lot of those issues. And then I realized, okay, so, so that's no longer a problem, but there's still like, I'm still stress eating. I'm still using food as a crutch. Um, I'm still having the occasional bouts of, of mild depression, you know, the probably seasonal depression, they call it. Um, so what, what can I do more to, to, kind of address that. And I realized that there was a really direct line between my body and how I felt about myself. And when I looked in the mirror, kind of being ashamed because I used to be in great shape and now I'm not, and I've yo-yoed and I have failed. So there's shame with that. Um, as I'm getting older, my metabolism is changing and, you know, things were starting. So, so it's one thing to be a little overweight in your twenties. It's another thing in your forties, <laughs> it goes in different places and you don't really necessarily like what you see. Um, and so, so there was like, th this was like, I realized this is all interconnected here. And if I'm going to solve my this, and if I'm going to maintain good health for the rest of my adult life, um, it's really important that I address that. And so, yeah, it's been a process to, uh, sorry, that's my Canadian coming out. It's been a process no, to, yeah. to un unwind all of, um, all of this and, and figure out, okay, what do I have to do to address these issues? And well, you know, my personal trainer, he's a great guy. Uh, he, he's so full of life and um, he's had some of those same struggles himself. So he's a great source of inspiration to me. And he says all the time that one of the most underrated antidepressants is physical fitness. Okay. And so um, on the one hand, you can't out exercise a bad diet. And if you're, uh, if, if you've got some mental health drivers that are causing you to stress eat or overeat um, or rely on food as an emotional crutch, then it doesn't matter how much you work out because you can work out for an hour and you can go to McDonald's and destroy that, <laughs> all the benefits of that workout in like five minutes. Right. So, um, so that's been, that's been what I've been working on is, is okay. I'm going to start with the physical fitness and get into a good routine. But now that I have a good routine with that, how do I continue to move forward where I can address those things? Things and and stop using food as an emotional crutch and start to uh, feel you know good about myself because of the work that I'm doing and I have noticed a major uptick in in positive uh, like the the benefits and the mental health benefits have have been really positive just getting back into that regular routine and like I said I haven't lost a lot of weight yet but fat is disappearing, muscle is starting to appear. So then you feel better about yourself and then you're more inclined to say you know I don't need to rely on that snack or that food um, 
if I'm feeling a little blue today, I, I, I've got other tools available to me. So my recommendation is, is, is don't try, you know, you have to do it all, but break it up into, into steps that you can handle and you can just integrate one thing into the next. And what ends up happening is, is you end up with a toolbox full of tools. So you have physical fitness tools, you have nutrition tools available to you, you have mental health tools available to you. And then as things happen in your life, you just have to go to the toolbox and pull out the right tool at the right time. And the other thing I would say from, especially from my own experience is you will not be perfect you are going to have setbacks and make mistakes, but don't ever quit. And, and um, that's something I, I am proud of to say is that regardless of the ups and downs and the, the, you know, winning the war at some points and losing other battles, I've never quit. And that fills me with a little bit of pride. Yeah. You don't have to be perfect. That's the cool thing about uh, living life that you don't have to be perfect to, you know, make a huge change. And, you know, I think, they say, you know, in the health and fitness world, they say all the time, like if they could have, if they can bottle, if they could bottle up the positive benefits of exercise into the pit, into a pill, it would be the most prescribed and effective pill in the history of pharmaceuticals. And so, you know, I think uh, kind of off of what you just said there, and you, you know, you mentioned that you can't out exercise a bad diet. And if you go to McDonald's, you can sure. And I agree with that. But I think the bigger thing, and from a starting point perspective of if you're eating and going and eating a Big Mac and large fries at McDonald's, and you don't exercise, a great starting place is don't do anything with your diet, just start exercising. That's that's an okay starting place. And then we can work on the diet. Or if you know, it's easier for you to work on the diet first, let's work on the diet first. And, you know, I think um, you know, I personally can and can talk about some of the demons uh, that go on. And, you know, I think anyone, um, I think those demons are kind of in people's heads, regardless of if they're fit or not. I think they're just kind of adapt. And you also learn how to uh, tune them out or have a conversation with them and be like, hey, nah, it's okay, man. Um, but I think for a lot of drivers that I talk to, you know, those demons are like, hey, Mark, uh, look at yourself. You know, I you don't like what you see in the mirror. You can't really do anything about it. And that's the thing that I, I found just the mental aspect and the mindset of, well, I can't do anything about it to be the toughest thing for people just to get started. Um, and for a lot of drivers, um, there is this mindset and, and mental aspect of it that has just unfortunately been kind of part of the industry where, well, we work hard, we're all over the place and our schedule is crazy. And if we're not driving, we're not making money. And I don't have time to stop and think about my health, I have to put it on the back burner. And, you know, I think you have given a lot of great examples of just places to start and the mindset to say, hey, it is possible. And you don't have to be perfect to make this huge life changing uh, decision and change in your health. And, you know, I think the perfect segue of just kind of ending this podcast off is, you know, if you could just share one, or if you, if you have multiple pieces of advice for, you know, a driver trying to live a healthy life, what, what would you tell them? Well, I, like I said, I'm not a commercial truck driver, but I've spent a large part of my career as a salesperson uh, selling heavy duty parts to the trucking industry. And so that's a lot of windshield time in, in a truck um, driving all over the country. And so I will say that whether you start with uh, your, your physical fitness in, in a fitness regimen or you start with nutrition, if you can move the needle just a little bit, the, the spin-off benefits of that are huge and don't underestimate that. You know, things like back pain uh, can be alleviated by losing weight, whether you achieve that through just nutritional changes and, and what you eat or you add in some fitness. Um, I get it. Drivers, they, they're driving 14 hours a day. Sometimes uh, they put in huge amounts of, of windshield time and, and, and it's very difficult. But if you don't do something and take uh, an action today, then you're really robbing from tomorrow. And it's as we get older, it gets harder. And so what my recommendation is, is, is just start just start today with one thing and do it for a while and, and get a few benefits from it. And then you can add something else. And what, what you'll find is that when you used to think that you didn't have time for it, you'll realize that you really can't afford not to do it. So, so we all, we all have the same amount of time in the day and it's about buying out a little piece of time for your physical health so that you can be here 
for the long haul. And, you know, I use that maybe yeah, nice. a little bit of a pun, <laughs> but, but, um, most truckers are family men. They want to be there for their kids. They want to be there for their family. They want to provide a living and a good living for, for their family. So we want to make sure that you're healthy and, and strong uh, today, but also 20 years, 30 years from now. And so start today, don't give up and reach out to people for help because there's so many people that will, um, will provide you with assistance and support through this journey. And uh, you're not, you're not doing it alone. And you can always reach out to, to Dr. Mark, or you could even reach out to me and say, Hey, uh, you know, I just need to talk. So there's, there's, there's friends out there who want to support and help you. And the trucking industry is the backbone of society. It is the one of the most important industries in our free uh, society that we live in. And so we need to be healthy and strong, both as an industry and as individuals. Uh, I completely agree. And uh, I, I appreciate you coming on. If they want to check out your podcast or kind of what you're doing, tell them where they can find you at. Right. So head over to heavydutypartsreport.com and uh, you can get all of our content there. You can connect with us on social there. So that's heavydutypartsreport.com. I'm sure there'll be a link in the show notes of this yep. episode. And, um, you know, we put out episodes every week. We, we do an industry insight uh, interview with manufacturers. We talk about heavy duty parts that lower cost per mile for your truck. Uh, we do a, a segment on selling heavy duty parts in a digital world. That might not be for your audience. And then on Fridays, we challenge the status quo in the trucking industry with a think outside the box episode. So I think for your audience, the truck drivers, the Monday episode with the industry insights on how to lower cost per mile with heavy duty parts, and then also the, the thinking outside of the box and challenging the status quo uh, will be where they'll be able to hear some, some great episodes about things that, that we can do to make the trucking industry better. And, uh, you know, tune in because there will, will be an upcoming episode with uh, Dr. Mark. So. Yes, I'm excited to come on and uh, thank you so much for, for coming on the show here and having that conversation and opening up because uh, there, was, there was a lot of personal stuff that you shared and I appreciate that. And I think a lot of people are going to be able to relate and uh, get some motivation from it and, ins and inspiration. So uh, thank you everyone for listening. Again, if you got some inspiration or motivation from this and say, hey, I want to make a change, you can head over to our website and join sign up for our program or you can come on the podcast and be a guest and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with me and we'll talk through your situation and give you some actionable advice um, or you know if you're like jamie who has done it on your own and you've made that change and you just want to share your story with other drivers go over to the show notes uh, there's a link in there or uh, to fill out our show application or go to truckandfit.com slash radio and it takes three minutes We'll have you on the show, and for everyone else listening, we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for listening. Making,